Here we are, 2017, on the verge of a new E3, and all of the new misrepresentations of gameplay, inevitably downgraded graphics, features and trailers that will not make the final release, and petty pre-order bonuses that'll be utterly worthless, but'll have you people scrambling to fork over all that hard-earned money to companies who continually lie to you about what you're actually getting. Developers and publishers will take the stage to let everybody know and as long as you promise them with a cherry on top that regardless of the game's quality, that you'll give them cash, they'll gladly reward you with an extra box of handgun ammunition or a pair of special pre-order bonus trousers, that will become obsolete in the first 11 minutes of gameplay. But the only way to get it is to pre-order. You don't understand, the game has 6,000 pairs of pants, but this is the special one you get for forking over money before you even get the game. Oh well, you do you. But while I've learned to not focus on hyping games, pretending things will just be dandy based on carefully controlled developer playthroughs or pre-rendered cutscenes without actual gameplay, I do look forward to at least the prospect of knowing what games might potentially release in a state that isn't comparable to Kathy Griffin's comedic career. It basically gives me things to keep on my radar. Among the new reveals that I'm interested in seeing is what Bethesda has in store for us this year. I've heard that they have a couple games to show off. Hooray, I suppose. I've enjoyed some of their things, granted, specifically the games that they publish and don't actually develop, like Dishonored 2, and Prey, and Wolfenstein, The New Order, Fallout New Vegas, yada yada. The last big release that they had themselves was Fallout 4, the post-apocalyptic duct tape acquisition simulator. This game's radar poll shows that most people seem to want a new Elder Scrolls reveal at E3, and eh, fair enough. Been a while since Skyrim, I guess, and the similarities between uh, Elder Scrolls and Fallout are pretty numerous. My own thoughts about this game, Fallout 4, will be partially explained in this video here, because I do like the game. I really do, I swear, for realsies. You just have to apply mods to it like you apply gauze to a third degree burn victim. But once you change a few things, like weapon balance and enemy difficulty spikes, armor compatibility fixes, graphical issues, perk or balance, lighting changes, optimization, shadows, combat tweaks, scrapping, sneaking, settlement restrictions, and pretty much everything regarding survival mode, it's a pretty excellent title. Fallout 4 offers a very solid base for modders to improve upon, fixing the many, many issues with Fallout 4 that made the vanilla game so lackluster to me, I absolutely required mods in order to keep playing it. So here we go, let's take a look at what Fallout 4 did well and what it did not so well, and what Bethesda can learn from this title going forward with their popular open world games. Because I think there is a lot to learn in terms of the way that they constructed Fallout 4. So, let's start things off on a high note and talk about the things Fallout 4 did really, really well. This will also be the shortest part of the video. Oh, give me land, lots of land under starry skies above. But don't fence me in. Let me ride through the wide open country that I love. But don't fence me in. Let me be by myself in the east. It's pretty, okay? I'm trying to say it's pretty. Alright, let's move along. The art design of Fallout 4 deserves every ounce of praise that it can be given. I can't stress how much the designers working at Bethesda nailed this aspect of Fallout 4. They should be commended for their efforts and their talents at creating a world that is both alien and familiar all at the same time. This isn't a feat so easily done, or at least not as well as it is here. One of the reasons that Fallout 4 has continued to garner my interest is because I feel so well immersed in the world. Granted, it does take a lot of work with mods to get to the point where it is for me and where its true potential can be seen, but the platform exists there to be built upon by the players. Every car and truck and automobile and every robot and bench and building and computer terminal and package of goodies and Every phone booth and every street sign and desk, it just oozes with the spirit of this 1950s American stylistic zeitgeist. It all looks like it belongs. It all looks like it should be there. Everything looks like it fits. Even in a world full of radioactive super monster mutants and science fiction weaponry that looks like it could have been pulled straight from the cover of an Isaac Asimov short story compilation, it all comes together into a setting and scenario that requires very little suspension of disbelief to be immersed in. The environments and items, the Commonwealth itself is a fantastically constructed open world that is fun to explore, and every little nook and cranny is full of goodies and trinkets for you to find. It begs you to search everywhere. It pleads with you to check 
every little corner. With good lighting and weather and effect mods, the Commonwealth shifts from a good open world to an amazing one. Nighttime especially creates such an atmospheric setting that I literally installed a mod to make the nights last longer than the days so I could skulk sneakily about and enjoy the ambience that comes with nightfall. Bethesda needs to give this team a raise and afford them all the time they need to do the work they've excelled with in Fallout 4. I don't know what setting will come next, but I do know that my expectations are extremely high for Bethesda's next open world game in terms of the world that I inhabit. There are some good gameplay changes to Fallout 4 that should be commended as well. Extensive improvement to armor customization in terms of chest and limb pieces, as well as the upgrades and changes that can be applied to individual bits, is a very, very good improvement over the now simplistic two-part armor system of older Fallouts. Where in Fallout 3 in New Vegas you could only use headgear and some sort of full body armor, I expect this to be at the very least continued in the next Bethesda title. Removing this, the ability to have left and right arm and left and right leg, chest pieces, um, maybe helmets, removing this would be a massive mistake, a gigantic mistake, a titanic step backwards. I do think there's room to improve in terms of sets of armor though. Skyrim had this problem with tiers of weapons and armor. Give armor purpose. Give us a reason to use different sets or give them attributes that set them apart in different and observable ways. Give leather benefits, give iron benefits, give steel benefits, give everything a sort of unique quality that doesn't render it useless as the game progresses. Now, give wearing no armor at all its own benefits, because it does. Put an emphasis on the idea that everything has its own place. We see this to some degree in games where leather is better for sneaking than steel, for instance, and cloth is even better than that. That sort of thing. I don't want to start a game and then suddenly have half of the things that I've seen in the first hour of gameplay become obsolete, where it's never ever a viable option to use them. And while we didn't see it in Fallout 4, I think magic needs its own care and attention placed into it, because mage characters were my favorite to play in Skyrim. Partially because of how weird the sneaking system was, and how, well quite frankly, how shit melee combat was in Skyrim 2. But I'll leave the subject of magic alone for now. Now in Fallout 4, I felt that the gunplay was pretty decent actually overall. The last two Fallout games had really crappy shooting in them, if we're going to be quite honest. I found myself relying far more on VATs in those games and, than I do in this one, because as far as guns and recoil and reloading and movement and combat goes, Fallout 4 actually feels like it's a modern game and it was made in this century. It was smooth enough to let me enjoy the actual fighting. Which is important because Fallout 4 has a colossal amount of you shooting things dead. If Fallout 4 didn't get this one down, the game would have been just a downright slog. But shooting mechanics were solid, and there's obviously room for improvement, yes. And while I wasn't one for melee combat in Fallout 4, I do hope that they learn from their improvement here and can apply that to the Elder Scrolls. Because I'll say it again, melee combat in the Elder Scrolls was shit. In Fallout 4, I felt as if the quests were very hit and miss. There were too many go here and commit genocide missions that should have had more twists and turns. I felt like there was just too many opportunities to have seemingly simple missions stay simple without having surprises thrown in. And for God's sakes, while I love the idea of settlement construction, though I don't really go for it myself, I prefer to be a more lone wanderer type of character, there's a reason that Preston fucking Garvey was a meme, alright? Don't make us constantly have to worry about protecting every farm this side of the Pecos. Or at least make the penalties for not doing so very small. Or just, just think of something, Bethesda. I know you can come up with something. But the third time I hear that Dead Skunk Junction is being attacked by raiders, I just kind of stop caring, alright? Fallout 4 did have some good, sh good missions in it, yeah? Though I feel they were more of an exception and not the rule. Give us more scenarios that make us choose between two good options or two bad options. Do what it takes to mitigate the go here, kill everything, come back repetition that Fallout 4 had a lot of the times. Give us objectives that, be, that can be completed in a multitude of ways. Interesting ways. And this includes non-combat options. Dear God. The answer to every problem should not be solved by asking yourself which ammunition you want to expend that day. Give me better optional objectives and side goals or something. Mix it up. Be creative. Use the narratives in quests to drive my decisions a certain way. Don't just try to sway my opinion with goodies or loot. 
Now let me see, what else did Fallout 4 do either all right or right right? Let's see, the art design, the environment in the Commonwealth, and the atmosphere was fantastic. Like here skulking around in the rain all sneaky like, that was really nifty, I remember doing that. Let me see, weapons were good, the um, gosh let me see, the armor additions were good. Um, what else did Fallout 4, I mean surely there's something else Fallout 4 did really well. Um, it looks pretty good, I mean from like a graphical standpoint. Um, man, I mean there, there's, there's other things, certainly there, there must be other things. I mean, I want to go back and say the individual locations and the interiors, especially to a lot of these places, did feel unique, but I feel like I'd just be retreading on how excellent the Commonwealth was constructed. I mean, I could throw weapon customization in here was really good. I mean, the weapon customization of Fallout 4 was legitimately a huge improvement over previous, uh, over previous games. It gives you a reason to go around looking for alarm clocks and rolls of duct tape. But I guess everything else that Fallout 4 does is just sort of either middling or bad. It's practically a meme at this point how glitchy and buggy Bethesda games can be, and part of me doesn't want to blame them. Sometimes though, I cannot be so charitable. This part, we're going off the script. I don't give a fuck, all right? Bethesda, look, I know that you have you have talent there. It's there. I, I see it. I see it in this game. Sometimes you need the shovel of attrition to find this talent, but it is there. You are confident, competent developers. You really, you really are. Your games are ambitious, which is how I can give you a pass sometimes. But... My first playthrough of Fallout 4 was riddled with bugs. Bugs that weren't just inconveniences, that wouldn't just make me go, ha, huh, as I trudged along through the Commonwealth and just kind of pulled me out of the world a little bit. We're talking bugs that would make me have to restart the game, or that would make me um, have to go back and do a certain level of work. I remember there was one bug that would mean that Whenever I went to a terminal, it would bug out the game and cause me to have to restart the entire game if my monitor's refresh rate was set to over 60. I don't, I can't, now I'm thinking back on it, I don't know how I figured this out, alright? But every time I went to a computer terminal, there was a very high percentage chance that the game would just simply lock up and I would have to restart the game complete all control alt delete task manager force quit restart the game it's not a huge deal the huge deal was how far back you had to go before you save the game the problem was that my refresh rate on the monitor that I'm using which goes up to 144 if it's set to anything above 60 for some reason it could trigger this effect to happen I don't know Maybe I can forgive you for this one. This is a strange one. Maybe you didn't see this in testing. I, I don't know. Then we have other problems like the inability to access terminals because of, because of pathing issues. If maybe you're on the other side of a chair and you look at a terminal and press E to access the terminal, your character doesn't have the intellectual capability to go around the chair and instead walks into the chair into perpetuity, meaning that you're just going to have to restart the game because nothing's going to change. To this day, there are very small bugs that I find. For instance, when you're trying to open a mag lock, it won't actually open until you press escape. And then you escape back to the game and then it unlocks the mag lock. Which is better than what it used to do. It used to be where I had to do an auto record for a shadow play in order to get the mag lock to open. This was eventually fixed, but I have no idea what any of this has to do with the maglock itself. I don't know. So that's why, in all of my old Fallout 4 footage, I would have about a minute or two minutes worth of me going up to a maglock, and then the recording would end because I had to use the shadow play feature to make the maglock open because... because reasons. Modders have done an excellent job fixing bugs, and for the most part, the game runs very well, and I have had very small issues with this game since. Bethesda is known for their bugs. They have very large, ambitious games. There's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of stuff to test. But come on, alright? 
the pathing issues with getting to terminals, it shouldn't be a feature that makes it to the full game, alright? I had to install a mod that would fix the bug in the game where if you start a reload and then swap between first and third person views of your character, your character has to start the reload animation all over again for some reason. This is the kind of thing that's very obvious, you notice it right away, and you train yourself to not do it. How did this stuff make it off of the factory floor, Bethesda? I don't, I don't understand how bugs that are as obvious and glaring as this can make it into the final product. Are you incapable of fixing them, or do you not do the work that you need to be doing for bug testing and fixing? You know there are people out there who would do this willingly and for free, right? You know, it's probably not a good idea to assume the things that Bethesda does and doesn't know. Keep your bugs under control, Bethesda. Sometimes they're funny, like ghouls floating in midair off of a highway bridge, for instance, but sometimes they are frustrating because they are... they're game-breaking, because they can cause quests to not trigger or be completed, because they make you have to restart your game, because they don't cause saves to act properly. Just come on. Show a little bit of diligence, just a little bit, or do a better job. Continuing with what Fallout 4 does poorly, no, I'm not even going to say poorly, I'm going to say disastrously. Here's what Fallout 4 did disastrously badly. The dialogue. The dialogue in Fallout 4 is terrible. I have no idea how such a huge downgrade in terms of the series ever occurred. I don't. Who at Bethesda thought this would be a good direction to take the series in? We were on an upward trend between Fallout 3 and New Vegas. It, it, it was obvious that the people who made New Vegas, the developers, because you guys didn't make that one, the developers of it, Obsidian, they looked at Fallout 3 and said, how can we improve upon the game? Sometimes I wonder if you looked upon New Vegas and asked how you could improve it. New Vegas took the series in an interesting step. It had RPG skill checks for dialogue options, actual metrics that would display whether you passed or failed. You have this skill, and you require this skill, that means you can't do this. Or you have this, out of this, that means you will succeed. Okay? It's not a chance-based system, where you could save before a dialogue set, and then you could keep trying over and over until you got the, got the answer you wanted. Even skill perks and other upgrades you've made to your character could influence the dialogue options that you could use and could affect missions in meaningful ways. And this is what is needed to flourish and grow. But instead, it got the deadly raid can of streamlining like, like the rest of the underlying mechanics that made other Fallout games deep and not just pretty or somewhat nifty on a superficial level. There needs to be more skill checks and dialogue. And not just charisma. There needs to be scenarios where your charming wit isn't actually a solution to an issue. Sometimes, it takes a level of knowledge in science or medicine, weaponry and engineering, survival. Sometimes it's these more concrete practical skills that will solve problems. There are solutions that you just cannot talk your way out of. And it gives the importance of the idea that if you rank up certain facets of your character, you really feel like your character is learning something and getting better at it. Doing more explosive damage is nice, yes, but how about using your knowledge of explosives to solve real-world problems and overcome non-combat obstacles? It's gonna be half a mile high at least. It must have taken hundreds, no, thousands of years to carve this thing. Hey, look, I made a bridge. It only took me like, what, 10 seconds? 11 taps. Bethesda, let's just, look, remove protagonist voices. Get rid of them. Just get rid of them. Don't have them be in the game. You, look, the voice actors they used for Fallout 4, they were pretty lackluster, all right? Definitely not worth having, since it's obvious the trade-off was having much less dialogue options and lines. It's better to have a protagonist that I cannot hear but relays the things I would want him to say better than it is to hear a video game protagonist I control say things aloud I would never say myself. If anything, it's counterproductive on multiple levels. It doesn't help with immersion. In fact, it hurts it. It's harder for me to put my shoes into a character I can hear if their voice and lines are delivered poorly, but when I read out their lines myself or think them out in my own head, well, that's the kind of initiative that players take to immerse themselves in a world that they don't know. They don't even think they do themselves. They don't even think about it usually. It's just natural to do that. You do it without thinking. You are the lone wanderer. You're the courier. You're the vault dweller. You put yourself in their situation. 
And it's not just the voice acting, it's the representation of things that will be said. What I mean by this is, um, one, of the, one of the first mods I ever downloaded was a mod that simply showed the text of what your responses would be in the dialogue, word for word, since the descriptions in the vanilla game of what your response would be often were ambiguous or misleading. So, sarcastic, for instance, could mean lots of things. It, do you mean a sarcastic yes, or a sarcastic no, a sarcastic maybe, a, sarc a sarcastic what? It was a recurring issue with the oversimplification of dialogue that basically nobody asked for and nobody wanted, and it turned out to be a liability to the overall experience. Give us lots of different dialogue options, and many of them have them just be optional in order to flesh out the knowledge of the world, or explanations about quests, or uh, character progression, things like that. Take out the voice protagonist, because that's something you just can't handle without mitigating overall control of the character. Alright? Now let's talk about and this is kind of like the el elephant in the room that people have been talking about since the game was released. Let's talk about the RPG elements of Fallout 4, or more like the lack thereof. They're, they are a shadow of their former selves. Skills are gone. Traits are gone. It's all perks. Just perks, that's it. Everything is perks. You level up, you pick a perk to upgrade or unlock, and the perks you can unlock are based on your special stats. That's it. Done. Over. That's all there is. That's the RPG foundation of Fallout now. I'm not leaving anything out. Special points and perks, that's it. I mean, what absolute and utter bollocks. But hey, you wouldn't want your players to have any thinking to do, would you? You wouldn't want all those bros from Call of Duty that you got to buy this RPG game to have to stop for one second and God forbid think about what they're going to do. I mean, we couldn't possibly have our players weigh the pros and cons of upgrading one thing or another. Just, just let them rank up forever and simplify every character-related decision they could possibly make. I mean, and look, in the perks themselves, they're, they're so lackluster. They're so uninspired. A lot of them are utter garbage. There's too many crap options there that are useless or that you could so rarely take advantage of, they might as well not exist. And then we have the ones that you're just never going to not pick. A 20% damage buff to rifles, and it does more armor piercing. Or a 20% damage buff to handguns, and you have more range. Picking better locks. I mean, that's stuff that applies to almost everybody who plays this game. Why wouldn't you pick those? They're so advantageous. There's no negative consequences to any decision you make when you level up. It just makes your character better and better. And, yeah, while leveling up, should make your character better, there's no reason to really think hard on what you'll pick since you'll either get to it eventually or next level or there's never any negative to picking one thing over another. Now, um, take traits from Fallout New Vegas. Those were both assets and liabilities all rolled into one. They had both negative and positive effects. For instance, the fast shot perk would give your guns 20% faster fire rates and cost less action points, but they would be 20% less accurate. Kamikaze would give you extra action points, but you'd take more damage. Small Frame would give you extra agility at the cost of taking more limb damage. Built to Destroy gave you more critical hit chances, but your guns would decay 15% faster. I mean, not that it's an issue, since Weapon Decay and Armor Decay, they removed in Fallout 4, so there's, there's another thing you don't have to think about anymore. God forbid someone uses their brain when they play a video game. And if we can take a slight detour about the decay of weapons and armor... I think it's okay to... Decaying... Hmm. How do I feel about this? I'm not really bummed out that they took out the uh, the decay of the quality and conditions of armor as you took damage. But I wish that your weapons would start to slowly get wear upon them as you use them. So that you didn't either rely upon a single weapon too much, or you had to use resources for the upkeep of your equipment. I mean, it's not a huge deal for me, honestly, but I do think that they missed an opportunity, especially in the much maligned survival mode, though it's that way for a good reason. And they just dropped the ball on what could have been a really neat option. I remember times in Fallout New Vegas where you would have a weapon and it would be very powerful, very strong. You'd come across a like maybe a combat shotgun or something for the first time, but it would have really low quality. So you knew you couldn't use it all that much. It made you want to actually save using it for when you feel you might need it. And look, I don't like the fact that this game throws ammunition and all sorts of everything at you so you're never without. 
this would have given you, God forbid, a reason to show at least the slightest bit of discretion when you were dispatching every living thing with a pulse in the Commonwealth. Armor degradation would at least give you a reason to try and not get hit by enemies. I mean, yeah, you'd take health damage, of course, but half the time it wouldn't matter because they would hardly do anything into you, to you anyway. And, hell, filling up your entire health bar is only a abandoned mattress away. Surviving encounters is, you know, obviously a good thing, but if you did so and took a lot more damage to your equipment than you think you could have done, maybe that would give you a reason to try again or to try and get better at the game, scrub. And think of the perks and the add-ons that could be used in tandem with keeping your stuff up to, up to par, to keep it at its best condition. Oh well, I will lament its loss slightly. I do think it could have been done well. I think it could have fit in well. It had its place, definitely. But I really wish they took the idea of traits, those positive and negative attributes you could choose for your character, and really expanded upon them. Think of, just, just in your head, take a second and think of all the cool, nifty combinations that could be done. You know, that AI pathfinding, though. But think of all the nifty combinations there could be, right? Maybe, I don't know, you heal a lot less slowly from stim packs and food, but radiation heals you instead. What if you gained a lot more experience from killing enemies, but at the same time, you took more damage from them? What if you could do 20% more damage, but also sustain 20% more damage? What if you had great bonuses to melee weapons, but great debuffs to range weapons? Simple things like that, and it could get as intricate as you want to make it. Here's a nifty idea. What if um, all of your sneak attacks did much, much more damage, say double damage than they would normally do? But all of your attacks that were done outside of sneaking did significantly less damage. This is the kind of thing that would sort of encourage you to stick to certain types of playthroughs. Or would challenge you to try and beat the game and explore the world with a, a certain mindset. That would do things like, oh, I need to be sneaking so I can do a lot more damage and take advantage of this trait. But if I get found, then my life's going to be all that more difficult. You could go the opposite route too. You can't sneak at all, or your sneak, your sneak ability is, is greatly constrained, but you get a lot more damage resistance in its place. Maybe the less weight you're carrying can affect the more damage you do. I don't know, we can get creative. There's a tons of things, and this is all just off the top of my head as I'm recording this. I'm not going off, I'm not going off the script anymore. Fuck writing scripts. I thought I would finally do it, right? I'm going to write a script to a video, and then I was like, ugh. I gotta type all this shit out, and I just wanna... This would encourage separate playthroughs, and it would encourage players to experiment and try new things. But alas, we don't have that in this game. But what's even stranger is that they completely gutted the idea of ranking up your skills. Every time you leveled up, in the older games, I'd say 3 in New Vegas, you wouldn't necessarily pick a perk that was done every other level, Instead, you would put points onto the certain skills your character had, like science, medicine, bartering, charisma, small guns, big guns, explosives, that sort of thing. So you rank up and you can put whatever, 15, 16, 18 points on uh, maybe making your sneaking better, right? Or you could do 10 points here, 8 points there, or 5 points to 3 things, or whatever mix and match kind of combination you want to do. And what was really nifty about this is that there wasn't a level restriction on what you could do. If you wanted to do nothing but put all your points on one thing as soon as you possibly could, go for it, man. The world is your proverbial oyster. If you want to do nothing but put your points on small guns and repair, fine, do it. If you want to do nothing but put all those points on charisma at the expense of everything else, yeah, fine. Go for it. If that's what you want to do, do it. But I hate Fallout 4's completely arbitrary level restrictions on what kind of perks you could have. So you can't, for instance, um, get that next damage upgrade to pistols until, hell, 10 whatever ranks ahead. 10 levels ahead. That's lame, first off. And one might say, well, that's to prevent the game becoming unbalanced. And that's a silly idea because it was Bethesda who decided to be the ones to even make that be a perk anyway. 
a 20% bonus of damage to pistols and their range, and that's a huge that's a huge buff you're getting all at once. In older games, it would be a much more gradual increase in damage. You would put a couple points, and every single point would do a little more and do a little more. Maybe, instead of having this all-or-nothing attitude, which it feels like some of these perks are, you would have a gradual increase in your abilities, so it didn't feel like all of a sudden you became extremely powerful. Oh, that That's enough about traits. I will wax on about how I hope traits really make a huge comeback in future Bethesda titles. Now, while you make fun of my ability to throw grenades in this game, we have to talk about what you always have to talk about when we talk about Fallout 4. Dogmeat's retarded, alright? I'm not gonna let this go. I'm not just gonna walk away. Dogmeat is fucking retarded. Right? There is one companion that I have at the Red Rocket gas station right now in my second playthrough. It's Dogmeat. You know where he's staying? There. He's not coming with me. Dogmeat is the most annoying companion I have ever had in any video game. And I cannot stress this enough. I'm not trying to be hyperbolic. I mean this with every fiber of my being. I hate Dogmeat. I am a lover of dogs. The exception being dog meat. It's like, I love humans, but not Hitler. Dog meat is the Hitler of dog... Well, okay, maybe not that far. Bethesda, look, companions are great. We like companions. Most of us do, at least. People like me, we kind of like to immerse ourselves, especially Fallout-wise with Fallout 4. I'm a one-man guy. I like to be the lone wanderer. I am the dude skulking around, being sneaky, checking corners with his suppressor on his weapon, you know, trudging through, being careful... I don't like someone following me around, knocking over lampshades, and generally just being an annoyance. I don't need you to carry things for me. I'll mod that stuff into myself if I want it. Leave me alone. Okay? But a lot of people like companions, and I understand why. But with Fallout 4, they were the most annoying things I've ever seen. Dogmeat is a primo example, alright? I felt as if dog meat was intentionally designed to get in your way whenever possible. Whenever there was a door, he would stand in it. Whenever there was a counter, he would stand between you and the floor. Whenever there was anything that you wanted to look at, he would waltz right between you and whatever it is you wanted to interact with. He was always getting in the way. Dog meat was consistently, constantly, always getting in your way. D-Dog never got in my way, for instance. He was always someplace else. He didn't get in my way. He didn't get in my way. He didn't get in my way. Stop getting in my way. I don't like when things get in my way. All right? I can't stress this enough. Hell, when I can't, you should, okay, Bethesda, you should be able to walk through companions. I will take the slight immersion breaker that comes from you being able to walk through companions if it alleviates the frustration of having one of my companions, especially Dogmeat, standing underneath every lintel like there's some sort of magnetic force compelling them to do so. It is as if it is instinctual for this German shepherd to get in every doorway. Okay, <laughs> stop talking about Dogmeat. Seriously, though. The next dog you have, fix it. Not in the traditional sense, I mean. Just, like, make make it not get in my way all the time. Companions should be useful. They should add something to your experience. They should offer you some sort of a service, or they should help you in combat. They should assist you. They should not annoy you and get in your way. But when the most useful thing a companion do can do is just to be a pack mule that follows you around carrying extra things, that's tedious and it's boring. Alright? Another thing Fallout 4 does very poorly is the narrative. Alright? The story. You have a game that's an open world, and whenever anyone opens their first or their newest Bethesda open world game, we obviously get giddy as a schoolgirl, right? Here is a whole new world for us to explore, monsters to slay, quests to complete, treasure to dig up, dungeons to skulk around about. It makes us excited, obviously. So don't have that excitement to explore the world and look at every nook and cranny along the way as we move about. Be 
juxtaposed by the primary story or the 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 the, the narrative being that you are on some sort of a time limit. We all know the story of Fallout 4. You're some lawyer or you're some soldier dude and you have a house with a white picket fence with your 1.3 kids and your 2.2 cars or whatever, living the good life. And then the bombs drop and you go into a vault, you wake up from sleep, someone shoots your husband and then they steal your son and you're like, oh fuck, I have to go find my baby boy Sean. At least your character says that, sort of. You don't care about Sean. You've had about five minutes with Sean, and he has been... I mean, he's a baby in a video game. Who gives a shit? I don't. I didn't squeeze him out of my vagina, right? So, you get out of the vault. Sean's been captured. Oh, no! I have to avenge my husband's murder and the same stroke. Man, life just really sucks right now. That's your motivation for following through with the main quest. Avenge someone you don't care about. Find somebody you don't care about. When the game is on a time limit like that, someone's been kidnapped, you have to find them as fast as you can. You have to rescue them. Rescue your son. Obviously, if it was your real son, you would be, you know, picking up the pace. You would be doing everything you possibly could to find your baby. Where is Sean? Where is Sean? Every stranger. Have you seen a man with a weird metal arm thing? He had a little baby boy. He looks kind of like me. Just much younger, shorter, windy little bastard, but he's mine. You step out of the vault, your obvious objective is you have to find your own lost son, but holy shit, there's a, there's a building over there. There, I mean, yeah, you have to go save your, your, your son, but, I mean, there, there could, I mean, there could be duct tape in there. And you're just not gonna, I mean, you're just not gonna not go and check and see if there's duct tape in that warehouse, are you? I mean, that shack there, that could have, there could be some bullets in that shack. And you might want those. And you're not just going to let perfectly good bullets sit there unused. What's that? An abandoned factory? Ooh, wow. I wonder what goodies could lurk inside. What's that? A raider-infested school? Oh, I want to go in there and take them all out and get all their stuff. Oh, Sean? Who's Sean? Oh, yeah, that's right. Sean's my son that I have to save. Shooting this was dumb. Don't have the story of a Fallout game revolve around your character needing to frantically do something. The character, the player, wants to explore. We want to check every little nook and cranny. We want to ex we want to have fun. We want to go out. We want to play in this massive playground that is the Commonwealth. We want to look at things. We want to experience a video game. We want to have fun. But at the back of our heads, oh yeah, you're supposed to be saving your son. No. Bad move. That was a bad story decision, Bethesda. You can have a sense of dread and worry in this overarching story without also having the ticking time bomb going on where you feel like you should be in a hurry to do something that's really important to you. In Skyrim, for instance, dragons, oh shit, they're burning people, they're eating sheep, what are we going to do? I don't really know. So it's not like we're on some sort of a particular time limit as to when we need to get things done. That doesn't clash with the idea that it's a Bethesda open world game and we want to explore and dick around. It also felt really weird that I, I play as a female character in Fallout 4. It feels weird that a lawyer, you know, a successful lawyer, who would just step out of a vault, pick up a gun, and then be able to kill human beings and fight off monsters and survive in some sort of a post-apocalyptic nuclear wasteland without really any issues, but hey, what are you gonna do? Stories, right? I mean, when you're the courier in New Vegas, you've lived in this world, you're not springing out of a vault all nice and cozy. I mean, you've been a part of this world growing up your entire life, it makes sense that you can kind of take care of yourself, or, you know, get shot in the head and be okie donkey. The thing is, if they would have taken out the, the son, if they would have had Sean not even be a character, and th there's no time limit on you avenging your dead husband, all right? He's dead no matter what, all right? And that sounds like a dick when I say that, but it, look, he's dead no matter what. You've got a little time on your hands to find out who did it. This whole mystery about the Institute and the Brotherhood and the Synths and all this stuff, you could explore the world, and that wouldn't clash with the mystery of having this stuff underlying society in this post-apocalyptic wasteland. Having a son that you need to rescue as soon as possible because you love him does. Anyway, enough waxing on about how much Fallout 4 kind of failed. In any event, I've said it before and I've said it again. Fallout 4 is an ocean of content with the depth of a mud puddle until you apply mods. Mods save this game. So what do they need to have for the next Fallout game? What... 
or, or the next Elder Scrolls game. There, there needs to be things that we learn, that Bethesda learns from Fallout 4, where it succeeded, where it failed, and they need to build upon that. They need to make Tamriel or, or America or whatever the next thing is, they need to make Fallout 4 a learning experience. One, you need to make the game very easy to mod. Make it very, very mod-friendly, all right? I wouldn't have finished Fallout 4 without mods. I will say it again, I would not have finished Fallout 4 if it was not for the mods. I got about 50 hours through a playthrough, which is pathetically short for a Bethesda open-world adventure game like this, and I stopped. And I didn't come back until I had loaded up a bunch of mods. I boop, Nexus Mod Manager, open it up. Here we go, mods. All right. Make it as mod-friendly and as easy for modders to tweak and work with as you possibly can, Bethesda. Hell, I understand that people criticize you for relying on modders too much to fix the problems in your game that shouldn't even be there. But modders can add so much to a game. Hell, I want you to take a look at some of the most popular mods on Nexus, uh, ne Nexus and, and, and Steam Workshop and all these other places, the ones that are really popular. Hell, go out and find these modders. Give them money, right? Pay them to work their stuff into your game. Pay them for the, uh, the ability to put their stuff into your game. Hell, there's so many community-driven pieces of work that make your games better. You need to take advantage of that. People want your games to be better. They go through all of these hassles to make your games as good as they can possibly make them. Take advantage of that. Now, that doesn't mean extort people. Pay them. Pay them for their ideas. Pay them for their work. Invite them over. Something. I don't know. I just see all these ideas. I, I go through my mod list here. Let me open it up real quick as I'm recording. Darker nights, interiors enhanced, pit boy flashlight changes, day and night cycle changes, ammo retextures, water retextures, wasteland creature redos, um, immersive scrapping, and subtle sneak text indication, eyes of beauty, wanderer themes, vendor cap increases, full dialogue interfaces, craftable armor sizes, chem redex, all this stuff makes the game better. Find ways to work this into your title when you make it. Go around to modders and say, hey, we're going to release this game. We've got this. What do you think? Could you do something? Would you improve upon it? Do you have a mod planned? Can we maybe hire you to make this mod you're planning to do part of the original game? We saw that you did a mod that was really popular for our last game. Can we pay you, right? Can we pay you to use your stuff, to take your idea and put it into our game to make it better right off the bat? Or just use that money and give the people who designed the Commonwealth a big ol' raise and say, y'all keep on doing what you keep on doing. Because the Commonwealth, again, looks amazing. Put the RPG back into Fallout. Put the RPG back into the Elder Scrolls. Open it up. Give us something to really play with. Don't rely on modders, but embrace them at the same time. Make your games deep. Don't just fill it with a lot of stuff to do. Like, there's a lot of stuff to do in Fallout. It takes you ages to see everything and check every building and fight every enemy and complete every quest. Yeah, the quality of those encounters, the quality of completing those quests, mm, debatably not all that fantastic half the time. All uh, The game is boring a lot, quite, quite frankly. I'm just going to be honest with you. Try to put more quality into everything that you do. Not just what you look at and what you explore. Make the game deep. Give real reasons to come back into the game. And, by the way, when we're talking about it, really, really work hard on making the factions better. They were okay in Fallout 4. They were alright, but make it to where there's either no right choice or no wrong choice. Don't have there be obvious moral superiors to others. Don't have there be a goody-goody two-shoes group that is morally better than everybody else who has better ethics and standards and who is just undeniably better people. Don't do that. Give us a choice between maybe two not great decisions. Make us really think about who we want to ally with and make the things that we do influence our um, standing with the factions like we had in Fallout New Vegas. If I do something to this group, it needs to lower my reputation with them. Or if I do something with this group, it needs to make my reputation better with them. And that needs to open up quests I can do for them. 
have the game split off into different branching paths that I can't do in a single playthrough. Don't make me play the game once and feel like I did the best option or I allied with the best faction or I had the right friends and there's no reason to come back and try anything different because the other people just weren't interesting or because I don't want to play an evil character in order to do so. For instance, the Institute, obviously the bad guys. Uh, the Railroad, obviously the good guys. The Minutemen, absolutely no flaws to the Minutemen at all. They're, they're, they're very good. They didn't have any issues. There wasn't any sort of internal struggle sort of thing. There's a lot of room to really flesh out these factions and where you could potentially be in terms of joining them. Or if you rise in the ranks or if you stay as a grunt or whatever the case may be. In any event, in my usual long-winded fashion, it's been 45 minutes and I've been bitching and praising Fallout 4. You know, I had, a I had a review a long time ago. I had a review of Fallout 4 done ages ago. It was about two hours long. Um, but due to a, a computer issue and a bogus community guideline strike I got a long time ago, it never got posted. So I've kind of been sitting on a lot of these thoughts for a, for a while and just kind of use making that review of mine, uh, which I don't have anymore, sadly. So I just soaked up the experience that comes with making two hour long movie maker videos. I'll put a link in the description to all of the mod. People ask me all this time, Rags, what mods do you use? What mods do you use? They change around a little bit. Mostly the list gets bigger and bigger as I play and want to add new things or I notice issues I want to have resolved. I'll go ahead and I'll put a, a picture of all the mods that I have if you want to take a look at some of them. Um, and I'll also link to my Twitter if you want to follow me there. Thanks for, thanks for listening, if you're still here after all this time. I appreciate that. I'll have my thoughts on Prey out next. I thought I was going to do it before this video, but I thought, eh, I'm playing Fallout 4 more. Let's go ahead and put this footage to good use. So you guys take care, thanks for listening, and I'll catch you soon. So what do you plan on doing about the jet problem in our community? How about the settlement problem? Another settlement needs our help. I'll mark it on your map.